As a parent in the province of Ontario, when you send your children off to school, you expect they will find a safe, enriching environment where they can thrive and not face discrimination as they go. And when that isn't what they find, you expect to be able to do something about it. But as an investigation carried out for the Ontario Minister of Education recently confirmed, that's not what's been happening at the York Region District School Board. Our next guests know this story all too well. They're Charlene Grant and Garth Bob, parents of three children in that board, and we're pleased to welcome them to our studio tonight. Thanks for making the trip here. Thank you, Steve. I know Thank York you. Region is just north of Toronto, but mm -hmm. I also know what traffic is like, so yes. I, I yeah, appreciate absolutely. you taking the time to come down here. Okay, three kids, your oldest. Fifteen. Fifteen. Mm -hmm. Starts to have some difficulty at school. Yes. Tell us the story. What were you noticing? So initially, grade nine started his um, grade nine year, um, and he started coming home with stories about his gym teacher. She, it was actually a, he got transferred to this school because of French immersion. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a pilot project. So this one teacher taught him in French and geography, and he would come home with different stories. One of the story, one of the earlier story was. Um, we know you're talented or you're athletic, but we don't need you to showcase your talent here. We don't need, need you, you to, to showcase, showcase your talent. talent here. This is not the place for it. Hmm. Um, another time he was with another student in gym class. They were running for the ball. They both collided. He got yelled at for safe play. This kid got held back after to ask, did he hurt you? Hmm. Um, the stories are, there's so many. And, you know, at first, the first question I ask him, because she's a young teacher, I'm like, do you have a crush on her? Um, we try to find out. We had meetings with the teacher, principal, vice principal. Teacher's white, I assume. Yes. yes. The teacher in question. Yes, okay, we white. should establish that for the record, obviously. Yes. Right? Okay. Yes. Yeah. You know, there's, there's other incidences as well, too, where he was doing oral presentations. Um, you know, the teacher asked him to stop. Actually, no, he stopped making his presentation because the teacher was talking to another student while he was doing his presentation. And then turns out that he got a lower mark than his partner uh, because he stopped talking. And when he challenged her on it, uh, she said, well, you stopped talking. And he said, well, I was presenting and you were talking to somebody else, so I stopped talking. Hmm. So there are all of these little issues that started to go on. And then we, we, we had the sense that the story started to be shared because other teachers started to come in. Yes. There was one, uh, uh, one teacher who had an uh, exchange with, uh, with him, um, a, a negative exchange, um, and he went to the teacher, because we, we, we teach him to, to uh, advocate for himself. Mm -hmm. And he went to the teacher and said, you know, um, sir, it seems as if you, you have an issue or you don't like me. And the teacher's response w was that, well, I know you people, you go away for the summer and you come back with all these bad behaviors, and then we're expected to deal with it. What, what did that you people mean? I, I could on one could only imagine, uh, but instead of getting upset, uh, he looked at the teacher and said, but sir, I'm always mannerly and nice to you, so how would you make that decision about me? And then the teacher ended up um, apologizing for the comment. So we must say this teacher actually shared the gym class with his gym, with, with his own gym teacher. So it's a shared gym class. So he, this is when we thought something is off, was when he had that discussion, we brought it again, we wrote a letter to the principal, CC, the director of education on it. So he was in gym class, they started basketball and he forgot something in his locker. Yeah, he went over and asked the... In the change room. The, in the change room, sorry. Mm -hmm. And asked them to um, open the change room. The teacher said in front of his old class, I won't open it, get your teacher to open it for you because I don't trust you. He went back, got... Said in front of all the kids, I all don't the trust kids, you? Yes. All the kids mm -hmm. in his grade nine gym class, all non-black. My son was the only black boy in grade nine. Uh, this, um, so he went, got the keys, went in the change room. The teacher thought he was taking a little bit longer than he should have, but he didn't know that because he was so embarrassed by that exchange, he went around the back door and came out and went back through his class. Mm -hmm. So the next morning, a few of his friends came up. I wouldn't say friends because he had just met these kids. By the way, when you were in the change room, um, teacher. The, my teacher, our teacher told us to go check on our stuff because we didn't, he didn't believe you, you might be in there stealing. Hmm. My son actually chuckled and said, no, you guys are making this up, and he called someone else over. When he called the other child over to verify the story, that child said, yes, he did. We believe he was being racist. So, Garth, all these things are happening, mm -hmm. and obviously they're of concern to you mm -hmm. as his parents. Mm -hmm. 
You went to the principal. Yes. Did you get any satisfaction from your interactions with the principal? No. We had several uh, in-person meetings with the administration. Um, my wife um, uh, looked at the teacher and said, listen, I've never heard anyone say this before, um, let's work together. Let me help you to solve this problem and let's go forward in a positive direction. Um, let's the, bygones be let's bygones. Be, let's, let's do this, let's work together and see if we can overcome this. Um, uh, that didn't work because the email, the incidences kept happening. We escalated it, finally we had to escalate it to the superintendent. The superintendent uh, said after a meeting with the superintendent, all of a sudden the superintendent started to say, well, maybe there's behavioral issues. In those first few meetings, we had asked, are there any issues with behavior? Mm -hmm. And the administrators and the teacher says, no, he's a well-behaved boy. Mm -hmm. uh, the superintendent came in and started to say that there was possibly behavior issues and ended up by saying, if you don't like what is going on, you are going. You probably should transfer him to English because he's in French immersion. He's in French immersion. Well, this right. is when the, this was when everything changed. That superintendent said you only have two choices. This is his French school. You could keep him here. Or you could transfer him to English. That night we had both driven separate cars. So I was with my son going home because I kept him back, thinking that they were going to ask him a few questions. On our way home, with tears in his eyes, he said, "Mom, this is never going to change. This is." What's going to happen forever? What do you think all of this was doing to your son's confidence? Well, based on his, based on his um, um, expression one day in the, one of the meetings when his teacher was present, he said, all I want to do is be a student. I want to be able to allow to make mistakes, but I feel like I'm always being scrutinized. I'm always being watched. For what reason? He didn't even know. He didn't even call race. He didn't even say any of that. He has never experienced this. When he, when, when he came home and told us about the story when the teacher said, I know people like you, he had no clue what that teacher meant. Mm -hmm. And we didn't even share it with him mm -hmm. because I didn't want to put anything in his head. I want him to be free. I, want, I don't want to put what I think on him. I want him to experience life on his own in that sense. When that night when I went home, I didn't sleep. I started researching. Um, things that happened in Toronto District School Board, and I found all these things, and I, my husband woke up, because I was crying, he said, why are you crying? I said, this has been happening to our kids for years. It's all over um, the internet. And that was when I Googled racism in York. And I found an article about a incident in, at Sutton, uh, at, in Sutton, where a boy was being beaten and being called the N-word, Confederation flag, flag, waving high. So I reached out to the reporter, Chris. A, con a Confederate flag, you mean the stars yes. and the bars? Yes. That kind of thing. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, we, I reached out to the reporter, um, Chris, from Toronto Star and another, um, and VACA. I sent an email, not expecting anything. And when I called the Toronto Star, expecting to get a voicemail, she picked up. And she and I said, have you, you know, I know you. Your your title says you do reports on schools in your region. Have you had any other parent? And she said, Have you called here before? I said, No. This is my first time. She said, We've had about ten other parents reached hmm. out to us. So that's how this got started. For well, us. this clearly became a thing because the uh, minister of education, Mitzi Hunter, ordered an investigation into the whole board and its practices. And let's just, I mean, the report just came out, and we want to share some of the findings that they sure. had here. So let's, uh, Mr. Director, bring these up if we can. Uh, the review was released to the public last week, and it found that the terms of Director of Education J. Philip Paraplee's contract were unusual for Ontario, including the 10-year term of his contract. Mm -hmm. uh, as we know, mm -hmm. that contract has been looked into, and his association with the board may soon be coming to an end. Yes. Trustees weren't transparent when repeatedly traveling to other jurisdictions at the school board's expense. Trustees were found to have poor knowledge of good governance practices. Administrative staff were suffering from damaged relationships, low morale, and mistrust. The staff and community perceived a faltering commitment to equity. Did either of you attend the press conference when this was all made public? We're yes. Both there. You were both there? Yes. And what was your impression, Garth, of how things went? Well, um, <laughs> it's surprising that the board of trustees did not know, or either they, they knew or didn't care that all of these things were going on, going on. It's interesting that it took outside people to come in and tell them what was happening at their board. Um, it's also interesting that the person that they just recently fired is the same person that they extended a, an unheard of 10-year contract mm -hmm. to. So 
all of the things that have been taking place um, lay at the feet of the, the, the leader, which is the, the, the um, director of education. But who put the leader there? It's the board of trustees. The board hired the, the board, director. Board hired the director. When uh, years ago, when the trustees' uh, jobs became um, um, all the the duties were uploaded to the to the province and to the ministry, they no longer had to negotiate union contracts. They no longer had to um, uh, deal with all the things of uh, managing a school board. They had one job, as the report said, that is to hire a director of education, and their second job is to advocate on behalf of the taxpayers who voted them in. And they failed on 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 both counts. They, they didn't hire a, a good director of education. That failed us. And when we tried to advocate because of the things that were going on, they, they failed to support us. So Charlene, in a very real way, your efforts on behalf of your son have led to this significant report and presumably some changes that are going to result. Are you confident that things are actually going to change in the York District School Board, York Region District School Board, as a result of all of these efforts? I have to say, since we met, um, myself and a few other parents from the board, from the region, met with uh, Mitzi's team, Minister Mitzi's team, we've mm -hmm. seen consistent uh, move forward for better. Mm -hmm. And um, that was the first time I felt heard. I actually broke down that day, and that was the first time I actually cried about the situation in a while. But based on all the recommendations, we've always asked, we're willing to come to the table and help with the changes. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I am very hopeful, I've been hopeful, that change is going to be, it's, gonna, it's coming. And it's a marathon, you know. Mm -hmm. For us, it's a process. We live it every day. We go through it every day. But we're willing to stick with it just for the changes. That's what I was going to ask you. Did, did you ever come to a point where you just thought, you know what, this is not going to work and we're going to take our kids out and go somewhere else? Never. No. The reason why, it, it, there was so, I mean, when we sat our son down, I remember we had a dinner table and we said, I'm going to file a human rights claim. He didn't know what that meant. Mm -hmm. I had to explain it to him. I said, I know this is a big ask, but I'm going to ask you, you got to be on your best behavior because they're going to come at you. They're going to scrutinize everything that you do, but this is not for you. This is for your little brother. I have a six-year-old, and he goes, Mom, it's okay. Don't, I, don't, I want to stay here. Don't move me. And it stopped being about my son a long time ago. I was at work, and this lady walked up to me one day out of the blue and goes, can I hug you? And when she hugged me, she whispered in my ears, thank you for fighting for my son. And we both started crying. And, you know, since then, so many of the people have come up to me and said that, and it's just for, it's not for, no longer for my son. He's mm -hmm. almost out of high school. I would say he's in grade 10 going in grade 11. But there's so many other students that this is going to help. And also, I got to say, Steve, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it probably seems as if right now the York Region District School Board has the, the, the perception that they are the racist board, as someone had said to me. But I think that there are a lot of great teachers, great administrators, great superintendents within the system. But we don't live in a perfect world. And when discrimination and racism rears its ugly head, you have to have strong, driven leaders that are going to navigate the organization through it. And, and that's, what we, that's what we've been fighting. Do We're, they have those there? Those I think, strong, driven leaders? I, th I think um, there are strong, driven leaders. I, I think the director was not the, the captain that was needed at at the head of this ship, mm -hmm. and so you know we're we're very um, we're very uh, encouraged that he's no longer there. But you know I didn't want this to be uh, you know the the entire board no. is is this way because there are good teachers there, there are good administrators there, there are good um, uh, staff members there. Um, but I think that whoever they replace as the director, who whoever they get as the new director, has to has to uh, be strong, has to be a leader, and has to have diversity and equity um, as, as part of their fabric to lead the, lead the change. Sure. Charlene, um, your oldest son now, is he, is he enjoying school like every kid should be enjoying school now that you have made these interventions on his behalf? Well, he's no longer at the same school. We have asked, this is one of the other reasons too, last summer we have asked, we asked for him to be transferred to another French immersion school. Mm -hmm. The board responded and said that 
removing him from the from his school will jeopardize their French immersion program. Mm. And this kid was breaking down. He goes, Mom, I cannot go back, go through it, because since we filed our human rights claim last February, there has been so many reprisal that came after mm. at him. No kid should have to like go. What? For example, his principal and his vice principal would visit his class every about three to four times a week. They would, stand, they would stand beside him and watch him work. Mm -hmm. They would time him while he asked to go to the bathroom. They would told his teacher, and I had this in an email, confirming, oh, you need to be more strict on, strict on him. He should have been punished for taking two minutes to go to his locker and not the 30 seconds he mm -hmm. asked for. He had a nosebleed once. The teacher, the principal showed up, asked where he was. My son was, came out the bathroom just to find the principal right outside the bathroom waiting for him. Like, mm -hmm. Who goes, who, who does that to a 15 year old? At the time he was even 14. And to say right now he's at Thornley and he's extremely happy, um, I see a difference. But we had to, and when we asked, why can't we transfer him? This is an extenuating circumstances as per your policies. The director, uh, the, the associate director said, well, we don't find this to be an, an um, extenuating circumstances. So and he's going to stay right where he was. Yeah. So in other words, the safety of our son was not as important as maintaining the funding formula for the French immersion program. Yeah. So what we did is we had to take him out of French immersion yes, and send him right. to an English track school for one semester until we can make arrangements because the time was coming we were asking for the transfer mm -hmm. and it was coming close to september and we knew he wasn't going back there so we had to put him in an english track school until we found a french immersion school that was op open to transfers which you we did said, which we did and he's now there and he's now there uh, but you know he he was a little behind mm -hmm. because he lost he lost the opportunity for some of his French immersion credits, so he wouldn't, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't graduate with the French certificate mm -hmm. if he didn't have those. So now he's on track to try and catch up on that, and things seems to be going well. He loves the school; the teachers are great. He, it's a great environment. Um, so, but you know, those are the things that we had. We had to do to to maintain um, this. Gotcha, you know? Charlene. I want to ask you one last question. It's a bit of a controversial question. You ready? Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're a black woman. Yes. The Minister of Education is a black woman. Mm -hmm. Do you think that gave her special insight into your situation, which resulted in a happier conclusion? I think anyone who have ever experienced marginalization, racism, systemic racism, or any type of discrimination, whether black, white, or um, anyone from the Muslim LG community, LGBT, LG would, have, would have been in a situation because they understood it. You can't change what you don't understand and what you don't believe in. And that was one of the big asks from the director. He didn't understood equity. He didn't believe in equity. And if you don't believe it, you can't lead your team to do the right thing. And that's all we were asking for. I mean, the previous Minister of Education, when the article first came out last February, February 2016, she made a comment on it and said it was disgusting that a child had to go through this. So it, clearly it's not, um, it's not because Mitzi is who she is, but she understood. And when I met her last week, I mean, I was choked up because I thanked her for for what she did for my son and what she's done for the community, but not because of who she is, but because of she understood. But I also think, Steve, that, uh, that, you know, just to add to what Charlene is saying, that certainly, you know, her being a black woman would, would add to her experience because I honestly firmly believe that as a black person growing up, she would have experienced all of those things. So she, she would bring a unique perspective. But to her point, anyone who's, who's uh, driven by, by the need for equity, I think would have seen uh, what was going on and felt that something had to be done. Understood. Mm -hmm. It's good of both of you to join us here on TVO tonight and share your story with us all. Thank Thanks you very for much. Us, Steve. Thank you. All Steve. Right. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit TVO.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.